Good evening and welcome to the first of three meetings tonight. My name is Dennis Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove, and at this time we will convene our Board of Sanitation meeting for Monday, May the 1st, 2017. In lieu of a roll call, I will ask each participant to introduce themselves, beginning on my far right. Dave Harrison. Debbie Springer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Sandy Seward. Thank you, Board. You have been presented a printed copy of the minutes of the previous meeting dated April 17, 2017. The floor is open for questions, comments, or corrections. I have none, thank you. Nor do I. If there's no questions, comments, or corrections, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I vote aye as well. And the motion carries. Thank you. This evening, board, we have five pages of wastewater claims in the amount of $77,913.30. Floor is open for questions or comments. I have none. Thank you. No, I, I'm good. No questions or comments. I'll ask for a motion to approve the wastewater claims dated May 1st, 2017 in the amount of $77,913.30. I'll make second motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I vote aye as well and the motion carries. We have no unfinished business from the previous meeting. We have no new business this evening. Comments from board members. I have none. Thank you. No, I'm, I don't have any. No comments. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make said motion. Second. Mm. The meeting is adjourned at 6.02 p.m. We will convene the Board of Public Works and Safety meeting in five minutes. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the second of three meetings tonight. My name is Dennis Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove. And at this time, we will convene our Board of Public Works and Safety meeting for Monday, May the 1st, 2017. Uh, in lieu of a roll call, I will ask each participant to introduce themselves beginning on my far right. Dave Harrison. Debbie Springer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Sandy Seward. Thank you, Board. Um, you have been presented a printed copy of the minutes of uh, our meeting dated Monday, April 17th, 2017. The floor is open for questions, comments, or any corrections. I have none. Thank you. Nor do I. There's no questions, comments, or corrections. I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes dated Monday, April 17th, 2017. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I vote aye as well, and the motion carries. Uh, <clears throat> board will go ahead and approve uh, the minutes of our special meeting dated uh, Friday, April the 28th, 2017. Floor is open for any questions, comments, or corrections. I have none. Thank you. No, I, I'm good. If there's no questions, comments, corrections, I'll ask for a motion to approve, approve the minutes of the special meeting dated April 28, 2017, as presented. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I vote aye as well, and the motion carries. Thank you, board. Thank you for coming to the special meeting on, on uh, Friday under short notice, and thanks for your uh, approval of getting that done. This evening, board, we have uh, 47 pages of corporate claims in the amount of $1,318,517.03. The floor is open for any questions or comments. I have none. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I don't have anything, Mayor. I, I had just had one thing on page 12, and we... Um, 
On the third one down, we paid Brown for lighting, street lighting, 9600 Does some of that go to RDC, Deb? No, it, it was all coded for um, okay. MVH. Okay. All right. But that was the only question I had. So uh, um, if there's no further questions or comments, I'll ask for a motion to approve the corporate claims dated May 1st, 2017 in the amount of one million three hundred and eighteen thousand five hundred and seventeen dollars and three cents I'll make said motion second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye I also vote aye and the motion carries thank you pass that through real quick Under unfinished business this evening, uh, we have one item, and that is the 2017 Stormwater Quote Award uh, from Wessler Engineering. Brent, good evening. Thank you. Good evening. In review, we went out to four contractors for quotes for the 2017 Drainage Improvements Project. Two contractors responded with quotes, Smith Projects, Inc. and Russell Excavating, Inc. Uh, we reviewed those quote packages. Uh, the total price of those quotes were only about $170 apart, but in our review of the quote packages, we uh, determined that uh, Russell excavating uh, their quote package was incomplete. It was missing the financial statement. Based upon our review of uh, Smith Projects, Inc. Uh, quote package, that was complete. And reading from the evaluation of quote letter, uh, okay. Wessler Engineering has worked with Smith Projects Incorporated in the past on various drainage improvement projects for the City of Indianapolis Department of Public Works, and they have performed satisfactorily. Smith Projects Inc. has also worked successfully with Wessler Engineering in the City of Beach Grove on the Hartman Park parking lot project. So we reviewed both quotes. There was one quote package that was complete, and based upon our experience with Smith Projects, we believe they can complete the uh, 2017 drainage improvements project. So if the board so chooses, uh, they could move forward with the notice of award to Smith Projects, Inc. Floor is open for questions or comments. I have none. I don't have any. Uh, based on the uh, recommendation from our uh, sanitary engineer, I'll ask for a motion to approve the uh, recommendation for Smith Projects. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I vote aye and the motion carries. Thank you. Also, board, I'll go ahead and ask for a motion to proceed with the notice of award to uh, Smith Projects for uh, stormwater improvements. Make said motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I vote aye as well and the motion carries. And was there anything else this evening, Brent, or Brent? Yeah, I just wanted to provide an update on the uh, sanitary sewer rehabilitation project. I wanted to let the board know that the project has been completed successfully with the exception of some site restoration issues. So we're very pleased with the outcome of, of that project and Miller Pipeline's performance. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. 
Any questions from board members? I don't have any. You said the site restoration was delayed? Just uh, there's just some grass that needs to be dealt with, yeah, where they've they've killed a little bit of the grass, so they need to do some seeding and straw. But uh, that's it. All right, thank Brent. You. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have no new business this evening. Comments from board members? I have nothing. I have none. If not, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make said motion. Second. The meeting is adjourned at 6.14 p.m. We will convene our common council meeting this evening at 7 p.m. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the third and final meeting tonight. My name is Dennis Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove. And at this time we will convene our Common Council meeting for Monday, May the 1st, 2017. In lieu of a roll call, I will ask each participant to begin or to introduce themselves beginning on my left. Buddy Templin, Councilman at Large. Jim Brooks, Council at Large. Dave Harrison, Councilman District 5. Debbie Springer. Craig Wiley, City Attorney. Lita Mascari, Council District 2. Elizabeth Lamping, Council District 1. Chris Duffer, District 3. Kevin Day, District 4. Thank you, Council. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This evening, under special presentations, we have uh, three or four items. The first is a proclamation proclaiming uh, May the 6th through the 13th as Osteogenesis and Perfecta Awareness Week in the City of Beach Grove. Whereas osteogenesis imperfecta is a condition commonly referred to as brittle bone disease, and whereas more than 20,000 people are diagnosed with this condition each year in the United States, and whereas there is no cure for this condition and treatment includes, but is not limited to a diagnosis, lab testing, and imaging techniques, medications, physical therapy, and orthopedic surgery. And whereas osteogenesis imperfecta is caused by a defective gene that disallows a protein called collagen to generate and strengthen bones. And whereas more information about osteogenesis imperfecta and the foundation that supports this condition can be found at www.oif.org. Now therefore, I, Dennis B. Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, do hereby proclaim May 6th through May 13th, 2017, to be Osteogenesis Imperfecta Awareness Week in the City of Beach Grove, Indiana. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused to be affixed the great seal of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, on this first day of May in the year of our Lord, 2017. And I'll distribute this to the uh, group that wanted me to present this tonight. Thank you. We have one more proclamation this evening, Council. And it's a proclamation proclaiming May the 14th through the 20th as National Prevention Week in the city of Beach Grove. Terry? This is a proclamation proclaiming uh, May the 14th, 2017 to May the 20th, 2017 as National Prevention Awareness Week in the city of Beach Grove. Whereas heroin and opiate use is at a record level and whereas substance abuse takes its toll on families and loved ones who are addicted and whereas addiction to opiates and other drugs is not a crime but an illness and whereas our public safety departments and Department of Public Works respond to incidents of abuse in our city every day, and whereas cities and health departments in both Marion County and across the state of Indiana must come up with programs to offer assistance to families and all of those affected by addiction. Now, therefore, I, Dennis B. Buckley, Mayor of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, 
do hereby proclaim May the 14th, 2017 to May the 20th, 2017 as National Prevention Week in the city of Beech Grove, Indiana. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the great seal of the city of Beech Grove, Indiana to be affixed this first day of May, 2017. I wanted to present this to you. You're welcome to say a few words if you'd like. If not, that's fine. Well, I definitely want to thank um, our first responders and also the police department for all the lives that they have saved, which numerous lives have been saved by both. And I appreciate all the work that you have done on that. And I don't know if the city also realizes the numerous overdoses that occur here daily in Beach Grove. There are a lot. I don't, I don't think you really realize that. And I, but I appreciate all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this evening, Council, we, uh, in your packet is a uh, Redevelopment Commission annual report for 2016. That poor, uh, report was put together by our financial consultant, Jeff Peters. Um, it is up for your review and uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it this evening or since you've gotten your packets or not, but it's there for your review. I don't think Don Webb's here. But it is required to be submitted to you uh, annually. I see Kathy Chapel. You have any comment on it, Kathy? <coughs> if you have any questions concerning the report, um, you may want to contact the clerk's office or uh, the Redevelopment Commission. But uh, this is a requirement to be submitted to you. Any questions or comments? We'll move on to the next item. At the last meeting, uh, the council approved a resolution and uh, the mayor and the clerk signed it, but you folks did not sign it. So the deputy clerk this evening has uh, the, sign, the signature sheet and she'll distribute it for your signature. I believe it was resolution four, if I'm not mistaken. Five? Resolution Another special presentation that's not on your uh, <clears throat> agenda <clears throat> in your packet was a memo from myself <clears throat> and I'll just read it to you uh, council you have one appointment to the fire department merit commission your current appointment is Don Smith Don's four-year term concludes in May of this year I have spoken with Don and he passed on that he would like to continue on the Merit Commission. I advised him that I would pass that on to the council. So uh, you have a uh, an appointment to the Merit Commission. Is there anybody else still an interest in Merit? I haven't uh, asked, I haven't talked with anyone.
We'll move on to uh, the reading of the minutes. The council, the uh, minutes of the previous meeting have uh, been printed, dated April the 3rd, 2017. The floor is open for any questions, comments, or corrections. If there are no uh, questions, comments, or corrections, I'll ask for a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Thank you. Public comments. Councilor? Yes. Uh, two people have signed up. The first one is Dan Pavey. Pardon? Yeah, you want to step up, sir? No, you don't want to. Okay, all right. Uh, next one is Joe Griffin. Okay, if I pass these down to the council, they can follow along with it. Can we pass them down? Take one pass them down. You all on this? Yeah. Okay, if I have a couple extra minutes, otherwise I'll either talk real fast or real brief. <laughs> uh, you stay on topic, how about that? Okay. All right, here we go. My name is Joe Griffin. Uh, I think most of you know me. Um, I have a couple of concerns about resolution number four and five. Um, resolution number four was done so we could get a federal grant that was uh, stated as slum slash blight. And the feds realize that that's a bad term to be putting down and will allow the states to go ahead and amend that out if they so choose. And the state of Indiana chose to go ahead and do that. And in doing so, they have had a guide set out so you could go ahead and follow and once you did that it comes in as redevelopment uh, because that doesn't have the same terms as slum and blight um, so if you look on page two that should look somewhat familiar if you look at the top that is the example of which they um, want this done that was done out of their book uh, it's right there in red. You got two of them. One's for a spot and the other one's for the area. Uh, Beach Grove went for the area. So if you go to the next page, you'll see that the council passed this under 35-7-14, to which is a criminal law procedure and has been repealed. Um, and now I'll bring up resolution number five real quick because even though it was amended out, there's always been questions about what's in a TIF and what's not in a TIF. And in your uh, RDC is supposed to list, which I'm pretty sure they should have it in there already, if you look in your report, yearly all parcels that are included in your TIF area. So we should have no problems of understanding what's in there. I included that little little law down there. If you go to the next page, if you look in your narrative, it's kind of um, uh, questionable because it says uh, general area uh, an area generally defined by, then it goes on, and then down there at the bottom, it says specifically set forth in attachment A. So I'm going to take it, if you can't understand the narrative, then the attachment A will clear all that up. I've been a part of this on the RDC. I understand how some of this stuff can just get real wordy and you don't understand you need a diagram. So if you go to exhibit a, you'll sit there and see there's a real thin line on Main Street, and then you have like a big block down there uh, between Emerson, and I'm going to say second, I guess that's what that is, uh, if you sit there and look at it. Shouldn't that be more of a block T if you want to include buildings on Main Street? Then if you go to the next page, Indiana Law specifically comes up here and says a couple different things. Um, 
if you sit there and look at that, uh, impaired structural condition that makes them unsafe to a person or a property, a fire hazard or a public health hazard. That's just a couple of them. Then if you go down there and you start reading the natural, nat, national, pardon me, national or the feds objectives to a slum or blighted area, they claim that they're even tougher than what the states are to meet up to it. Um, you know, to which kind of brings up a couple of questions. Uh, should this have been just a uh, copy and paste blank resolution? Because you want 35 dash, what was that, 35, 14 dash 7, it should have been 36 dash 7 dash 14, I believe. Uh, this should have been just a copy and paste and fill blanks resolution from the state for an, from their example. As stakeholders, uh, will Beach Grove citizens find all information posted on the Beach Grove website as we go through this? Can buildings on Main Street be included since they're not in the narrative or diagram? Uh, what buildings are included? And what happens if a building is included and the owner does not want to follow through with the grant procedure or whatever else because uh, terms of grants aren't right straight, aren't straightforward on every grant. It doesn't mean, hey, here's money, there you go, it's free. Um, when I was on the RDC, they had specific guidelines. You could get this grant money if you follow lines and then certain things go on. Um, uh, I had a student grant that wasn't free money either. You had to do certain things also to follow that. So not all grants are free, so what, what are the terms of those? Um, I'm not for or against this, I'm just bringing up some points about what I've seen in resolution four and five, and I was just, uh, you know, uh, it could help, but let's just make sure we do it properly and stuff. So I'm just kind of, kind of wondering on those. Questions? So what are, what are you saying, Joe? Are you saying that the line down Main Street isn't going to include the buildings, and that 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 should be modified? Correct. You did two things here. You brought it in on a. Uh, according to your sample right there, it should be 36-7-14. You brought it in under 35-7-14, to which is a criminal law code, and it's been repealed. If you go there and look at the example, it sits there, and it shows specifically what you should do in order to bring it in. It's basically uh, a fill in the blanks and, and that stuff there. Uh, you know, as being the old uh, clerk treasurer, if it's not clearly defined, then it really can't be included in there. Uh, and if you sit there and look at the federal guidelines and the state guidelines, they are specific in your narrative and stuff, and they want you to be very specific on what's included and what's not included, uh, down to the street guidelines and that stuff. Uh, right now, like I said the last time, it just looks like we have a line and we blighted Main Street. Blighted, slummed, redeveloped, however you want to call it, Main Street. No buildings are included down there. If all you had to do was run a little line down there, uh, why do we have the big T at the top? It should be a block T in there, really. If you're asking me, that's what I would think. But you go to the top down there, Emerson and Second, that is including all buildings. Down Main Street, we just got to run a little thin line. And when we were talking, uh, from what I understood, uh, we we're going to be doing buildings on Main Street too to be included on this. Uh, from from what I heard the last time, that's why I'm kind of wondering. Uh, just points points right there. So right now. Uh, we don't even have it under a redevelopment, still considered a slum or a blight, blighted area since it came in, didn't come in under 36. Craig, what's your assessment? It sounds like to me as a Scribner's there, I didn't prepare the resolution, but I, I don't have any reason to dispute what you're saying. I don't know. That's why I passed out this stuff so you guys could sit there and look at it. I mean, there is a lot of stuff. I just took out some highlights. Uh, it's pretty easy to find if you go there and do a little research. I did pull it all out because uh, you people know I can get a little bit much on the uh, information. And that. so I just pulled out highlights and put stuff down there uh, just so you could, could know and understand a couple quick things. You can do further research, but um, that's pretty much in line with what they're generally saying as an overall thing because, you know, if the federal government, as it said in one thing, if federal government said this is just for general uh, resurfacing and everything else, we'd be broke. Everybody would be doing this. Uh, you know, another reason is why you hiring an architect to come through here because you got to have an architect say, hey, why is it broke? And if you sit there and look at Indiana state law, you know, they, they are specific on what they're saying and the federal government wants even going deeper into what they're saying. 
Uh, so I just named off a couple, but personal health, you know, public health hazards to, to the public, um, you know, uh, it, it gets very specific on how you include it. It's a bit more than just general. That's why I was all worried about calling it a blighted area. And even if you did rename it into a redevelopment area, which would be nice if you're going to do it, uh, redevelopment sounds much better than a blighted slum area. Uh, so those were kind of my concerns. Any other questions for Joe? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Joe. Anybody else sign up for it? Nope. That's it. We'll move to uh, committee reports. Mayor's Youth Council. This. Good evening. Bishop uh, sends his regards. He actually went home ill today. Um, that's going around a little bit. Uh, we also, I know with a busy agenda for you last month, um, skipped last month, so I feel like I have quite a bit of, of fun news to share. Uh, we completed our community service for the spring, and the weather did cooperate, which uh, was awesome for us. Um, we got so many complimentary note cards back from people and the kids love to hear that the teachers love to hear that um, so it's just all in all a fantastic day I think for the community and the high school two grants that I wanted to update you on um, I mentioned one of these I think earlier in the fall when we were going for it but we're really excited about the movement on these we have the Lilly grant advisory committee that's meeting um, this last week and then next week um, what this grant will do is it will increase our ability to provide counseling and restorative services for our students and we're targeting the after hours um, time for the kids and that's a district-wide grant so we're very excited about that uh, we received the planning grant and we are now going for the implementation grant which would be additional funds the work ethic certificate grant is what I mentioned earlier. We're also excited about that coming together. Uh, we will implement next year for students. And based on criteria for graduating seniors um, of GPA, attendance, um, community service, uh, things, volunteer things that they would do outside of, of school time, they could receive a work ethic certificate as part of their graduation exercises. And we're hoping as part of the advisory um, partnership that businesses will then guarantee interviews for students that graduate with this work ethic certificate so we're also excited about that we celebrated our administrative assistance last week and we are celebrating our teachers this week so if anyone knows of a teacher or administrative assistant feel free to send them some some regards for their hard work um, our spring sports, I always feel like they get the short end of the stick with weather, but they are plugging through. We've had a few cancellations. Um, softball and baseball are doing pretty well. We had a few wins in ICC for girls tennis, um, and then our track and, and field is, is doing pretty well as well. Our academic Super Bowl was held at the high school uh, in late April. We placed in class two, um, second in science, fine arts in third third for social studies, third for math, and third for interdisciplinary. So the kids did really well with that. Uh, the ICC art competition was spectacular for the high school. We took first place, and one of our students, JC, was also awarded best in show. So really excited about that. Um, Hannah Blaylock, one of our students, was on the All-State Jazz Choir, and a number of our Spanish Four students placed gold, bronze, and honorable mention in the Spanish tests. We have two small um, things that we're planning for in three weeks. One is baccalaureate and the other is graduation. Um, we're doing a pretty interesting thing um, this year with baccalaureate I wanted to share. Um, we've not separated out our top 10 in the past um, and baccalaureate has been um, sort of a dwindling um, program in terms of attendance. So we'd like to recognize our top 10 in addition to perhaps increasing the attendance at that event for students. So we have a pay it forward theme with the par pas partnerships with pastors in the community. Um, so we will still continue that, hopefully bringing more of them together on the baccalaureate event. Um, and we will honor our top 10 that evening. And the top 10 will identify an honored educator and they will each read 100 words about each other. So it's a tearful evening <laughs> I'm planning for, but we're excited about it. 
And then our graduation this year, as you guys may remember, um, it's our centennial. It's our 100th graduating class this year. Um, so I thought it, it appropriate to present um, City Hall and Mayor Buckley with the 100th edition of Beach Grove High School's yearbook. So we have our actual digitized yearbooks. Um, I know the library has those uh, digital. And so obviously this one will join that, but hopefully in another hundred years, it'll be kind of cool for people to look back on that. So thank you. Thank you, Liz. I'll certainly take any questions uh, if anyone has any. All right, good evening, happy May. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> RDC report? Uh, ABC report, actually. Good evening, council members. Um, so today we had our ABC meeting. We had two um, renewals. One was um, the El Matria, Ma, Mach, Mach, just butchered that one, sorry. The El Mal, Malchio, I cannot talk tonight, I'm really sorry. Malchio, the M Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, they were um, approved for renewal. And then Night Owls, um, was approved as well. Um, we had a new application for Lucky's Pub under Stephen Tyler, Taylor, LLC. Um, so they were approved for a new application for um, Lucky's Pub. Any questions? Where is Lucky's Pub? Lucky's Pub, it's at 2nd and Alton. Or Albany. Albany. Yeah. What was the name of that Mexican restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> Is it El Mariachi? <laughs> El Ma yes, thank you. I can't talk tonight, apparently, so. Ask the mayor where he falls in on that 100 years. <laughs> That's what you need. Come back in. <laughs> well, you took four years of German, so there you have it. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Exactly. The uh, Greenscape Commission report is on file, plus uh, attached to that is a uh, proclamation for uh, Arbor Day. It was a very good ceremony on the 23rd, and I uh, want to thank the folks out at Hornet Park for uh, helping the Greenscape Commission put that on. So, <coughs> uh, Debbie, was there a financial report? No. Okay. Uh, no report from compliance, and you have you should have public safety report uh, on in front of you. That concludes committee reports. Under unfinished business, carried over from the previous meeting, we have uh, EDC nominations. Uh, I'll defer to the council president pro tem. Buddy? To my knowledge, we have um, two names, and I see both of them here, uh, Ann Pavey and uh, Susie McMillan. And to my knowledge, those are the two names that were mentioned um, at our last meeting. Um, and I think, uh, if I'm correct, I believe uh, Councillor Day brought up uh, Susie McMillan's name, and uh, Councillor Harrison brought up Mr. Pavey's name. So, Mayor, that's uh, unless there's something else to be added by any councilor, uh, um, those would be the two names that we will vote on. And unfortunately, and I say that because uh, uh, we have two good citizens out here trying for this position, that only one gets to to move on. Kind of like a game show. But uh, and at that point, Mayor, I'm not sure how you want to address the vote. Do we? Uh, uh, want to just go individuals and we're going to uh, afford the, the we, we can yes that's, uh, um, I know Mr. Pavey had signed up to speak but I'm thinking maybe it was for this is that correct was that yeah. I'm sure you, you, you do want to speak though correct sure. there you go all right you want to be the first then <clears throat> you have to be able to uh, pronounce the name of the Mexican restaurant to move on though <laughs> El Mariachi <laughs> oh no <right. laughs> Only because I heard it. <laughs> uh, honorable council members, Mr. Mayor, um, I'd just like the opportunity to give back to Beach Grove. Uh, my wife and I have raised our children and, you know, here for 43 years. We lived at, uh, on 13th, a uh, great place to watch the fireworks from our house. Um, and I've known Susie and Dan for many, many years from Holy Name and Susie be a great candidate. It's a shame we both can't serve because I think we both have distinct, uh, uh, you know,
things to offer. Uh, I offer uh, my last 10 years at the city county for uh, Marion County, Indianapolis. I was a project manager and so I offer my uh, leadership and uh, planning and communication skills. And uh, I believe I sent everyone a uh, just a brief uh, resume. Um, I apologize for having led the uh, Marion County property tax system, putting that into place. No, I don't. <laughs> that was quite a project. I enjoyed it. But anyway, uh, you know, I'd uh, be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, I would certainly uh, I'd love to serve on this committee to help uh, promote economic growth and uh, job opportunities, uh, increase the tax base, as it says, and uh, really make this place, uh, this, this great city uh, even better place for to raise our kids and grandkids um, I believe that was all I had to offer so may I answer any questions okay thank you thanks thank Dan <clears throat> thank Susie McMillan Um, first, I just want to say thank you to Kevin Day, Councillor Day, for nominating me. I appreciate that. And I really don't have anything to add. Dan Pavey would be a wonderful um, appointment as well. I've known Dan for years, and he has quite a bit of experience, and quite a, he has the education. So I think he'd be wonderful as well. Um, the reason I would mainly be interested in it is as a Main Street business owner because I would like for us to have a voice in what goes on in this city, and I don't feel like we always do. So um, that's one reason why I would like to serve. I'm not, I don't clear, have a clear understanding, I don't think exactly, of what an EDC is supposed to do, but I'm sure I could pick up and learn, and I'm sure I would take the time to learn if I were put on the committee. So that's all I have. So thank you very much. Thank you, Susie. I can say that the conversations I've had even today and yesterday that uh, both uh, Dan and Susie uh, complimented each other, and uh, that's worth everything. So appreciate that. And that leads us to uh, making a selection. So unless the mayor has any guidance, I just say that each member just uh, I would uh, pull the council individually. Okay. You know you're right. Okay. Susie McMillan. Susie McMillan. Dan Pavey. Susie McMillan. Dan Pavey. Susie McMillan. Susie McMillan. And I uh, believe. What's the tally? I believe it would be four. Or excuse me, five to two. Five to two. Yes. Any other comment on the uh, EDC nomination? I have a, uh, a comment, Mayor, that has, um, I, I want to say, first of all, I'm glad that the EDC was brought up. I know in the past it was the only thing the city guided themselves on because of metropolitan development and we didn't have an RDC. But I, I thought it was funny that I just wanted to share this because I think it's fair to the council members of um, really that how difficult it is when they know two individuals and a small town. And uh, uh, to both of you, um, I just uh, want to compliment that that's what come from out of the council. So it makes it hard uh, sometimes to make a decision. So I just wanted to pass that along there. Okay, we'll move on to... <clears throat> General ordinance number one, 2017, is up for approval on third and final reading this evening. This is an ordinance that increases the ambulance rates for out-of-city uh, responses. So uh, at this time, I'll ask for a motion to read the ordinance by title only. I'll make said motion. I'll second. We'll vote individually on my left. Title only. 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 Thank you. At this time, I'll ask the deputy clerk to read the general orders number one, 2017, into the record by title only. General ordinance number one, 2017, is an ordinance that amends chapter 34, section 
B of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, pursuant to ambulance responses outside the corporate city limits of the City of Beach Grove. Thank you. General Ordinance Number 1, 2017 is up for approval on third and final reading. This time I'll ask for a motion to approve. Make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Please uh, record your vote. General Orders number 2, 2017, is up for approval on third and final reading this evening. General Ordinance 2 is an ordinance that uh, deletes th four chapters of the current <laughs> Code of Ordinances concerning employee policies, fishing at Lick Creek, libraries, and taxi cabs. At this time, I'll ask for a motion to uh, read the ordinance by title only. I will make said motion. I'll second. When we'll vote individually beginning on my left. Title only. 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 Thank you. General Ordinance number 2, 2017 is up for approval on 3rd. Excuse me. At this time, I'll ask the clerk, deputy clerk to read the ordinance uh, into the record by title only. I'm sorry. General Ordinance number 2, 2017 is an ordinance that starts the process of updating the code of ordinances for the city of Beach Grove concerning codes that are outdated or no longer apply. Thank you. General Orders number 2, 2017 is up for approval on third and final reading this evening. This time I'll ask for a motion to approve. I'll make said motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Please register your vote. General Ordinance number 3, 2017, is the ordinance for adjusting the sewer rates. That has been tabled 
until further notice, but I do want to update the, the council on some proceedings that have taken place since we've last met. We have conferred with both uh, Citizens Energy and uh, our attorney, and uh, we have the three objectives that we're trying to meet are, the first one is to get the rate increase reduced for our rate payers. Number two is to extend the time when the rate increase has to be enforced. We would like to push it back at least a year. And the third and final thing is to eliminate the capital improvements payment or payment that we do each year to citizens. So we are working through that. Other than that, there is nothing to report uh, this evening. And uh, I'll advise you when, uh, and Craig will advise you when we move forward. I don't anticipate anything uh, at least through June, maybe even July. So we'll just table it until then. Any questions or comments? Thanks for the information, Mayor. Yeah. Okay. We'll move on to General Ordinance Number 4, 2017. In your packet was a clean, we had made some changes, and you should have received the clean changed ordinance. If you have not, please let me know. But anyway, General Ordinance Number 4, 2017 is up for approval on second reading this evening. And I'll ask for a motion to waive the rules and read by title only. I'll make that motion. I'll second. And we'll vote individually up beginning on my left. Title only. 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 Thank you. General ordinance. Or at this time, I'll ask the uh, deputy clerk to read the ordinance into the record for second reading on title only. General ordinance number 4, 2017 is an ordinance that amends chapter 99 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Beach Grove pursuant to Parks and Recre Recreation. Thank you. General ordinance number 4, 2017 is up for approval this evening on second reading only. This time I'll ask for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. I'll second a motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. Thank you very much. We will hear this on third reading at the June 5th City Council meeting. That concludes unfinished business from the previous meetings. Under new business this evening, we have two items. Uh, first is a public hearing pursuant to the Main Street Revitalization Planning Grant. At this time, I would like to introduce Mike Kleinpeter, who is the uh, grant writer who is assisting us uh, in this uh, endeavor. So, uh, Mike, I'll turn it over to you. This will uh, begin our public hearing. Mike? Good evening. My name is Mike Kleinpeter with Kleinpeter Consulting, and I'm a certified grant administrator. We are applying specifically for a downtown revitalization planning grant through the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs. We are requesting $40,000. We will be contributing a local match of $4,450, of which $2,225 of that will come from the Redevelopment Commission. $2,225 will come out of the city's general fund. The purpose of this downtown revitalization plan is to look at current market conditions downtown, the physical characteristics of the downtown, and then identify potential business owners that would be interested in getting architectural renderings of their current buildings and architectural renderings of how buildings could look after the improvements are made. Um, Ochre does have minimum technical requirements for these plans, so there is uh, about a three-page document that whatever engineer or architect that's selected will have to follow. <clears throat> The request for qualifications has been sent out to architecture and engineering firms, and anybody that is interested in potentially doing the plan will need to respond by noon on May 15th. We intend to submit our application for the $40,000 on June 30th, 2017. We want to make sure that all citizens are informed of the project and able to voice concerns if they may have so. Uh, just a little bit of background on the process and where we've been and where we're going. We submitted our letter of intent to 
uh, the Office of Community Rural Affairs. Susie Ripley is our liaison. We had a site visit with her on uh, April 5th. The funds for these programs are non-competitive, so we will, we will be able to get these as long as we have the slum light resolution, which Mr. Griffin talked about us just a little bit ago. As far as, I wanted to address some of his concerns, if I, if I may. Um, the, res the code 35714, he said it should, it should be 36714. He may be correct on that. I don't know. Um, honestly, that's a one of OCRA's forms they give us for the resolution and just tell us to put the amounts and where they come from. So I'll reach out to them and ask them. Um, in regards to the Main Street and whether those buildings are eligible, those buildings are eligible. Uh, Susie Ripley uh, provided guidance to us in Next Stop Beach Grove when we were developing this, and any building that is touching any part of that T is eligible for this planning grant. Um, an architect or engineer is needed for this project because this is phase one. Phase two is after we do this planning grant, we're able to apply for up to a $500,000 grant. It will require a 20% match, but uh, in order to, to qualify for that, you have to have cost estimates and architectural renderings of current buildings and what the proposed building would look like. So those steps are what this planning grant does up front. Uh, building owners, if they do participate in the first phase, they are not locked into the second phase. They can things happen, they may not be able to participate in the next phase, that's okay. Um, I currently am working in the city of Greenfield with their big downtown revitalization plan. They just had a $500,000 grant funded, so I'm very familiar with how this works. Um, so with that, I think there is a sign-in sheet for the, for the meeting tonight. I do need everybody to please sign on your way out. And with that, I think we'll turn it open for public comment, concerns, or questions. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Um, the, if, if the $500,000 grant were awarded and you said we had a $20,000 copay, would that mean there would be $600,000 then? So it's a $500,000 grant with a 20% total project cost match. So it actually ends up being a $500,000 grant, a $125,000 match. Okay. Uh, most communities that apply, the, they work on a partnership between business owners and city to come up with that 125. dollars Sometimes we get some philanthropic match, stuff like that. Okay. And how, does that how was that money spent if we did get it? So what would happen is on this first stage, we're going to identify seven to nine buildings. When we interview architects, that'll be one of the questions asked is how many buildings will we get for this plan? The more, the better. Uh, but they're going to put together what the current building looks like and the future uh, building would look like. Signage, facades, doors, windows, storefronts, all that stuff is eligible. And they're going to give us a project cost. So um, once they do that, then we're going to take those numbers and apply for the big grant. So the big grant's going to be for $625,000. You usually have about 48000 in grant admin, usually 75000 in engineering. So then you get $500,000 worth of those improvements in those buildings. Um, it always comes back, though, that the, some of the people you work with up front in phase one, they may not have the financial means to help in phase two. So it's, it's really important is when we're looking up front on which buildings we're going to improve, and that's just going to depend on interest. If we have a lot of interest, then sometimes we have to score these buildings based on certain parameters, so everybody's got a fair shot. Um, sometimes there's not; there's only seven or nine businesses we're interested, and everybody gets a shot to come in, and it works great. So um, that's kind of how the process worked before. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, go ahead. Do you understand how the grants are given? Yeah, I, I had a couple of questions. One, <clears throat> is it true, when they read the ordinance last week, I had a concern about if, if it deemed that that business was not worth fixing or whatever, even though it's not owned by the city, sure. it could be torn down. Is that correct? That is not correct. Okay. There, this, so in order to qualify for this federal money, You've got to either qualify under, this money comes from HUD. Um, this is called the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG. There's two ways to qualify for this money. You've got to either be 51% of your community has to be low to moderate income, or you have to pass a resolution declaring it um, an area-wide basis um, slum blight. So the whole area. Right. And so, it, it's, and, and giving it that, that 
that slum blight designation doesn't mean anything's getting destroyed. It just means it's eligible for these funds to make improvements. So um, that's. <coughs> Right, and, and that's just, that's the federal language that's required for these funds. And I'm writing up here just because i got to keep track of all the questions. Go ahead. Um, my question is, on these grants, I, I heard you mention if the business wants to participate. Okay, so who actually gets the grant? Does the business get the grant, or is the city getting the grant? So these funds will only go to the city. The city is the legal applicant for these funds. The city will manage all these funds. What will happen is if, if the city and business owners come in with some kind of relationship to where they're going to put up so much money and you guys are going to put up so much money, you would deposit that into the city's account. The city would then apply for the grant and the clerk treasurer would sign off saying we have enough funds to cover the project. So it would, it's not you directly, but when you're wrote into the grant, you're going to be, if we go for the $500,000 grant and we write in that we're, you're interested, you say you have your local match, we did the architectural renderings, we got the cost estimate, then there'll be some paperwork like, um, um, there'll be some paperwork that's signed by the business owners saying they're, they are planning on going forward with this project. But that's for the second phase, the big construction phase. We're not there yet. That's for phase one. There is no match. The city is paying. Uh, the city and the redevelopment commission are paying for that. For phase two, that's totally up to whatever the council, the redevelopment commission, philanthropic match, business owners, kind of come in. There's it's 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 a wide range, honestly. And who decides which businesses are eligible? Right. So right now we're working with Next Stop Beach Grove. Uh, but if any business owner is interested, they they're more than welcome to participate. Um, but what, what does it have, when you say you're working with Next Stop Beach Grove, they're not a business entity, so I'm right. trying to understand how you say which business Right, so they're the main street group that's working here in town. Um, but if any business owner is interested, uh, you can reach out to me or reach out to Mr. Kaufman or the mayor and let us know you're interested. What will happen is we'll end up seeing how many businesses are interested. If more than seven or nine or whatever architect says we can do with our money, are interested, then there'll be a, probably a scoring rubric that's put together like, and I don't know exactly what questions, we could probably pull some from some other communities that have had this similar problem where they've narrowed it down, um, but I don't know, we're, we're not sure we're going to be there where well, we've got to narrow down yet, so I don't want to. And, and my last question is, have you met with any of the property owners on Main Street that own the properties for businesses? Have you met with any of the property I have not. Okay, does anyone do you know? Mr. Kaufman, I do believe. That would be a, a big question that I would. I, I mean, I, I'm trying to understand. Yeah. We're, we're, we're trying to get contact, but it's just hard to get contact. I, mean, I, I looked at, like, Franklin, for example, and I know there's only about six businesses that are participating in it. According to their website, mm -hmm. that's correct. I don't know if it is. I'm not sure. I know people have had, like, 22. Yeah, I. So to answer the gentleman in red's question, I kind of skipped over and I apologize. I did work for OCRA for 10 months, so I'm very familiar with what goes into these grants, what happens, how they're scored. You mentioned the Franklin one. I actually monitored that project, so I came in at the end to make sure everything was done correctly. 
uh, so I'm very familiar with that one. Greenfield brought in 10 or 11 businesses in their big $500,000 grant. So, um, so just to, to fill in. Yes, sir. Oh. <clears throat> no, so what, 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 I'm just using Greenfield as an example because we just recently did that one. Um, every business owner put up a certain percentage of their building. So if the cost estimate said your building was 100000 and you put up 20%, then you put up 20000 uh, We are going to have to have property owners involved in this because we can't make any changes to their building without a title with their name on it. So. I'm not a property sure. owner. I'm just a business owner. Sure. I'm curious because yeah. I've had a lot of people asking questions about that, including sure. Sure, and if there's any landlords out there that want to learn more, uh, I've got cards. See me afterwards, and I'll give you a card and have them reach out to me. I, j I just live 15 minutes away, so I'd love to meet with any of them that are interested. Yes, sir. And, and, and the same with Next Stop Beach Grove. I know you get the emails. You're on the email list, Susie. So if you can forward that to the property owner, I don't know if he or she is on there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
continue the work that has been done um, in the City Beach Grove um, with the infrastructure and the new Main Street and getting all that taken care of in the past. And now, the, a lot of the buildings on Main Street are old. I mean, they're all, my store is built in 1923. Um, all these buildings, so some people have the money to maintain them and to fix them up. Um, if we're able to have properties who are to be fixed up and then a new business will open up in that property, then you know that's great for the city of Beach Grove and our Main Street. But I think this will give an opportunity to those individuals or businesses who need that extra help um, to kind of fix up their property and to continue um, providing the services or the uh, the product that they do there on our Main Street. So um, if you guys have any questions, we'd be happy to answer any of them. Um, and again, uh, Next Stop Beach Grove is an organization who we started last year on, on an offset of the Greater Beach Grove Chamber of Commerce because we wanted to be that voice of the business and the property owners there in Beach Grove. Um, so if you have anybody who hasn't been contacted in the past, um, we're trying to get that information. We're trying to come up with a database of names, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, um, anything that we need to to contact those people to let them know uh, the things that are going on um, specifically in this area in the grant process. We'd love to um, get that information so we can make sure they're aware of it. So um, again, I appreciate your guys' support. Jim, have you found a few businesses that have been difficult as, as far as the ownership of the property to communicate with? Yeah, there's a few. Um, I know Don Whalen and Tammy Hanna, they, they sent out a, a lot of letters to a lot of addresses, people who we haven't been able to get contact with. Um, a lot of them, I think, are um, landlords who live elsewhere. Um, we've gotten some of those back. Um, I think Don has gotten maybe a handful or two of those back. Um, we, we have a, a growing list of email addresses, um, and I know not everybody uses emails, but if there's a phone number, we, we don't mind calling if we have to. Uh, we're all volunteers here, but if we need to call a handful of people, we can uh, to remind them of a meeting or a deadline or any type of issue that is coming up. We'd be happy to call them if, if that's their uh, main uh, method of contact. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah, if any question, you can email nextstopbeachgrove at gmail.com. Um, is our email address, um, and then we forward them into, you know, to Dennis or the clerk or somebody. I'm sure they can filter its way down to our group to make sure they're notified of anything that's happening. Do, do you find that businesses are receptive to this, or you find? Oh, absolutely, that, yeah. yeah. So you're finding um, a good, a good, I mean, a good response. Yes. And people are businesses are liking this idea. And, and After our uh, initial in. public mm -hmm. meeting that right. we invited all the. Uh, mm -hmm business and property owners to last year um, we probably have I'd say at least 20 or so 20 to 25 uh, active business owners and property owners who are coming to meetings and are serving on the committees and are volunteering their time to help promote next stop Beach Grove um, specifically on the website uh, through emails um, the Southside Times did an uh, article on it uh, last week as well so we appreciate that so um, yeah there, there's a large group of people who are excited about it who are willing to uh, provide the time because it, it, it does take a lot of time to promote um, a whole area um, and that's kind of where next stop Beach Grove came in because we wanted to be that next stop um, there's all these other small areas around central Indiana where people go to eat and dine and to provide services and, and you know take care of those needs that they have in their life and we want Beach Grove to be that next one so we we, we want to do that as a group of individuals and business owners um, and property owners there. And I understand that your businesses promote each other. You, Correct. You, Absolutely, you, yeah. It, you step, yeah. Correct. You, you promote it, each other yes. and that improves the business and the Correct. overall the Correct. well-being of the Somebody's home. Somebody's coming here for one for one service and they don't realize there's another business there. It, it, it only stands to benefit that other person or that other business because if they're coming here for a reason, we need to get them a reason to stop and to stay and not just do that one thing there. So um, I, I think most people realize that. Um, if they're successful, everybody else will be successful too. And I know your information is out there. You've been coming to the RDC meetings. Correct. You had I was at I was I was went to the meeting that you had last year. It was mm -hmm. a large event. It a was. lot of participation, a lot of enthusiasm. So correct. Uh, you know, I applaud you for really correct. wanting to do that for us. That's city. fine. Like I said, I, it, this is I think that it can be the heart of Beach Grove, and I think mm -hmm. um, it can be a very big area for where activities and events and Absolutely. people can come on a regular basis. Um, and just walk the streets and see what they can find because you'd be surprised what's out there because we, we calculated about 88 current operating businesses um, in that T area. So um, with the opportunity of having about 115, 114 um, if we were at full capacity. So um, we'll get there eventually. But there, out of those 88, I think you'd be surprised what is out there if, um, if you realize what you needed in your life on a regular basis, uh, service or good. Uh, I think it's most of it's out there if you just want to go down there and see for yourself. Because I was very surprised myself when. Well, thank went down you for there. that community so, effort. That's yeah. what we need. It's fun. So, 
appreciate you guys' effort. A lot of energy there. I, I, this might be a hard question, but is, yes, sir. is uh, uh, Chris over here hard to work with? I mean, oh no, he's no, great. Okay. All right, yeah. he's yeah. keeping us all together. I got the wink. I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he he keeps us all together. <laughs> Thank so. you guys. Yeah, I have a friend of mine that I was with a week ago Sunday, and it, it came down and went to the tea room. Mm -hmm. and I was we were at a dinner, a bunch of us, and she was talking about the tea room and about a great florist and beach grove and about the shoe store and she said they're really starting to build the place up and that the, the, she didn't notice some empty buildings and I think with revitalization and building the facades and everything could bring in more business and I'm 100% for it. I agree. Thank you. And, and I think people are seeing that benefit and seeing the investment and realizing that it is it is well worth it in the long run um you know with tammy hannah and the rest of group in the team room it's a great example there that she's there for the long run and she sees the potential that our main street has um also with the guys that bought the old meat market at fifth and may i know that's going to be a great thing when that comes to fruition it's going to be a lot of work on their end but they they see that that benefit as well so um this planning grant here just kind of help hopefully push that along a little bit to where we can get to that end goal faster than um we are currently so well i encourage the council to become part of the chamber when you go to the chamber what limited times i've been able to go the business owners are young they're enthusiastic they're welcoming um, they've got a real vision for our city and uh, it's it just makes us proud to to be part of you any other questions thanks guys we appreciate your help keep up the good women. thanks <clears throat> I want to recap uh, what uh, Mike said in his presentation. The uh, Indiana Code, uh, the statute number, was supplied to us by Okra. It's not something we made up out of our hat. It was supplied to us by the state agency. And all of those buildings on Main Street are eligible for inclusion except any municipally owned property. City Hall, the Senior Center is not eligible for any funding. Is that accurate? That is accurate. All right. And can you, in your packet um, is Resolution 7. We have to disregard that. There's a new resolution. It's almost verbatim, mm -hmm. but if it's in front of you, if you would pass that on. Okay. Right there. This one right here? Yeah. Oh, okay. <coughs> and Mike can explain uh, why we have to do this. Sure. So, again, Okra's got um, their own set of very specific pieces of paper they want followed, and this is one of their resolutions, and they wanted it to look like this. And there was some, I think there was maybe just a couple sentences different, but uh, I didn't want there to be any anything to jeopardize us getting the grant, so I wanted to be 100% safe rather than sorry. So if you read it, it says everything the sa exact same except... Uh, there's like two sentences different, and I'm not sure it really changed what the intent was. So we'll close the public hearing and go to new business. Uh, the resolution number 7, 2017, is up for approval this evening concerning uh, Oak Work Planning Grant. And at this time, I'll ask the deputy clerk to read the resolution into the record, please. Resolution authorizing application submission and local match commitment. Resolution of the City Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, authorizing the submittal of the CDBG planning grant application to the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs and addressing related matters. Whereas the Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, recognizes the need to stimulate growth and to maintain a sound economy within its corporate limits and whereas the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974, as amended, authorizes the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs to provide grants to local units of government to meet the housing and community development needs of low and moderate income persons and or the elimination of blight and, whereas the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, has conducted or will conduct public hearings prior to the submission of an application to the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs, said public hearings to assess the housing and public facilities and economic needs of its low and moderate income residents. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana, that 
One, the mayor is authorized to prepare and submit an application for grant funding to address planning for improvements to the De City of Beach Grove's downtown area and to execute and administer a resultant grant including re requisite general administration and public ad management contracts and agreements pursuant to the regulations of the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs and the United States Department of in Housing and Urban Development. Two, the City of Beach Grove, Indiana hereby commits the requisite local funds in an amount of $4,450 in the form of $2,225 from the General <coughs> Fund and $2,225 from the Redevelopment Commission as matching funds for said program. Such commitment is contingent upon receipt of CDBG funding from the Indiana Office of Community and Rural Affairs adopted by the City Council of the City of Beach Grove, Indiana this first day of May 2017 at 7.15 p.m. Floor is open for any questions or comments. Well, I like the, the new one actually kind of uh, makes it clear on what the uh, RDC is responsible for and, and uh, what the, uh, the city is. So I think it was something what we discussed in our last meeting. So that's, that's a good thing. If there's not any uh, questions or comments, I'll ask for a motion to approve the uh, resolution number 7, 2017. I'll make said motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same sign. That concludes uh, new business this evening. Uh, council comments beginning on my left. Buddy? I just want to uh, thank uh, uh, Dan and Susie for throwing your name in the hat like good citizens. I, I mean that sincerely. It's something that I hadn't really thought about, just the, the whole idea of sometimes I'll have names up here of someone I, I, I've never even heard of, and um, and then you got ones that uh, different people are bragging to you about and so forth, and that's a good, a good feeling. Um, I wanted to make a, a comment about when Terry's here about uh, opiate type drugs. I I, I know how they affect the fire, how they affect the police, how they affect families. Um, hospitals and uh, crime and anything else that goes with it, it's just, it gets bigger and bigger. And an opportunity to bring that to our minds today was, a, was a, just a, a good thing as far as the information. It's not definitely a good thing, those that are addicted. Um, and uh, with that, I want to thank uh, those that uh, spoke tonight and like uh, with Joe coming up here and giving us some information as well. I guess I go on and on, but with that, just uh, thank everybody for being here tonight. Jim? I'd also like to thank Dan and Susie. I've, I've known Dan for 102 years, I think. We played softball against each other. Uh, I know, got to know Susie quite well, and her being a business person on City Beach Road. I, uh, I, like Dan, I'd like to put both of them on there, most definitely. I thank Mike for his comments. Appreciate all that information you gave us. I won't be here at the next meeting. I'm going to be on vacation, so thanks for being here. You need a break at 102. <laughs> <You know. laughs> uh, thank everyone for coming, and thank uh, Dan and Susie for putting their names in. <clears throat> I know Dan and I had talked about it quite some time ago, and... Uh, There'll be other things, I guess, come along, and I'll throw your name in the hat again. Thank you. Uh, just Joe and Chris, I mean, I think it's exciting what you guys are doing. Um, I think everybody kind of looks to, you always bring up Fountain Square about they kind of struck, struck gold, you know, with, you know, the redevelopment and everything. So nobody knows what that magic formula is. Um, but hopefully you guys are, you know, trying to find out what it could be for Beach Grove. Um, I was raised by a, a business in Beach Grove Main Street. You know, it was uh, something that I've been a part of my entire life. So it's exciting, you know, to see what you guys are going to do. So look forward to it. I want to thank the parks. Uh, going Green in Beach Grove was a great success. It was a fun time. Uh, people getting together. <laughs> passing out trees, kids excited about growing and uh, celebrating Earth and what we can do for our community. So let's keep going community together. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you for to Dan and Susie for both applying. Uh, I agree with Dan. I wish we could use both. Certainly, Dan, stay engaged because there will be more opportunities, I guarantee you. I just want to thank everybody for coming. Thank you to Dan and Susie both for putting your names out there. All right. I have uh, several things for you, Council. Um, first in your packet was, or I passed it out tonight. Oh, yes. It was a chart that looks some, something like that. And it says, um, Indianapolis Metropolitan Planning Organization. This is for budgeting purposes for next year. Um, this is the invoice and then listed below are some other things that are vital that we maintain our presence in. So when we start talking about budget uh, later on this year, these figures will come back up. Um, the Hoosier State, uh, this is the first year that I can remember that uh, the budget that was a uh, signed by the governor included uh, funding for the Hoosier State. Uh, that's good news. Um, and uh, hopefully that will continue. So uh, this is just an update for your information. Uh, this Saturday at, uh, from 8 to noon uh, at the police and fire station on Churchman, it's a blood drive for Indiana's fallen officers. It, that should have been in your packet as well. But the public's invited to donate blood. Uh, there's been a lot of time spent on uh, House Bill 1002. That is the road funding bill that the governor, I think he signed it today maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, that's good news uh, for uh, local government, and it's certainly good news for us. Uh, 90, there's over 95,000 local roads and streets in Indiana. And 90% of them are in cities. So uh, this uh, bill will allow our LRNS budget to increase by 20% in 2019. So uh, that is very good news. The consumer might not like it because of added fees on car registrations and 10 cents per gallon per gasoline, but this is good news for local government. And you know we have uh, enough bad roads. And there's an email on House Bill 1002, an update on that. Should have been in your packet. Uh, also in your packet is a couple of uh, articles concerning utility increases. Uh, one was uh, Power and Light, 68% rate increase. And uh, they were... The IURC was sued uh, by uh, Consumer Coalition and several other groups, and the Indiana Court of Appeals rejected a challenge Wednesday to an Indiana Power Light rate increase. The court ruled Wednesday that it did not have the authority to order the Indiana Utility Regulatory Commission to reconsider the rate hike simply because it would impact some customers more than others. that's in your packet for reading and then Friday council uh, the the uh, Board of Works um, had a meeting and passed a resolution concerning small cell tower structures the last day of the legislature uh, they approved Senate Bill 213 which allows telecommunication companies to install Small cell towers, every, small cell towers, every thousand feet in a city, and they gave local municipalities five days to pass a resolution to either prohibit it or stymie it, and that was very unfair. That was a very unfair bill. Uh, the Board of Works passed a resolution on Friday to um, establish a, uh, for lack of a better term, easement uh, commission that prohibits this type of activity. And 
can you imagine a cell, a, a telephone pole with a cell tower on every thousand feet coming down Main Street? That would just look so terrible. Um, I don't know, that just shows you the power of uh, utility lobby uh, to the legislature. But anyway, this affects everybody. And uh, so now what we've done is uh, you can't put, you can, you, put, you can put them on existing telephone poles, but you can't add poles. So that's something that we had to do. We had to have it in, they passed it, we have, had to have it enacted by midnight, April the 30th, which was very, very unfair. And, we, and the, with the five days, you had to advertise it two days before you met. So it, theoretically, it gave us three days to pass a rule, and that's just bad government. Anyway, that's uh, the National Day of Prayer is this Thursday at noon at the steps of City Hall. We invite everybody to attend. Any other comments? Yes, Deb. On the blood drive, if anybody has ever had to have a transfusion, which I have had, please donate. Because if somebody didn't donate, I wouldn't have had been able to get the blood. I'll say one thing. I want to thank uh, Debbie. I forgot about that for stepping in tonight. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Thank you. You got a little better looking, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> have to go far, me. <laughs> Amen. Sure. It's about that sewer thing. They said the lawyer was in on that. Last meeting, you said something about you got a contract with the, with the you know, that they can only go so much of an increase. Are you pursuing that also along with those other things that you mentioned? I think that's one of the things the mayor was addressing. That's what is being, that's what, what it, that is what it's going to be looked into. Motion to adjourn. Uh, Dan. Yes, Dan. Thank you all for your consideration. Welcome. Motion to adjourn. Make a motion we adjourn. Second. Meeting is adjourned at 8.20 p.m. Thank